Okay, now, do we all see what we have on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so today, if you wanna write this down, the topic is employees and business ethics. Employees and business ethics. And why we are doing this is because in the definitions, we said ethics and values are right of stakeholders, which are not written in any law. So the first stakeholder, we are trying to explore their ethical issues is employees. And if we say employee, I, I, I work and I'm employee, you work, a lot of us are employees. So this topic is dealing with issues that no law talks about and this gray area. And therefore we wanna ensure that ethics come in and regulate it. And so the first question we will ask, which is also in the slides that I've sent to you, is about to what extent are employees stakeholders? Okay, hold on, give me one moment, please. trying to answer is in what way can we say employees are stakeholders of firms and when we say somebody is a stakeholder a stakeholder simply or the word stick so anything that you have interest in it means you have a stick or we can say you are a stakeholder so when we come back to employees, we will try and ask quest the question, are employees stakeholders of firms? And the answer is yes, because they earn their wages, they earn their salaries, they earn their livelihood on the firm. So if suddenly the firm goes out, runs out, man, it can lead into a lot of complicated things, unpleasant things. That is the first thing, right? That we confirm and affirm and approve that workers are stakeholders of firms. A moment, please. Okay, so tomorrow, if I ask you, why are we seeing employees as stakeholders? You explain that employees have various interests in firms. And among these interests are earning wages, earning salaries, depending on the company for their medical treatment, what have you, 
and a lot of them. All these things could not interest, could not interest. Now, the next thing after that, that I will ask you tomorrow is that, um, what areas are the ethical concerns between employees and employers? What areas bring ethical challenges? And the first one that I like everybody to remember tomorrow is the number one here, which I'm underlining. And it means, or it is known as assumption behind HRM and reality. What that means is that today they say, we don't talk about personnel management, we talk about human resource management. It means that manage the total worker, manage the total employee. But what makes, what the ethical issue is that, even though that it is a, it's assumed that the, the worker today is a higher personality than before, but we do not see, see this on the ground. So because we do not see this on the ground, that is what makes it unethical. You've moved from personnel management and you're talking about human resource management. But in reality, we don't see that employees are, the, are at the heart of institution. In fact, whenever there is uh, inflation and profit is going down, you will hear that the first people, they will ask to go home or reduce their wages, benefits, an allowance will be the human beings. So business editors is trying to say, you have promised to treat the employee in a very special way, but we don't see that on the ground. And therefore, when it comes to what human resource says and what they do in practice, there is a wide variation. That is what it means. So, so if you listen to the news in Ghana, you might have heard about a week ago that the Minister of Finance was on air saying that if you are working with the government, you're traveling, they're going to cut business class ticket. Uh, they should do a lot of meetings online. They're going to cut this allowance, this allowance, this allowance. A lot of them you cannot import a V8 plenty. All these things pertain to the employees. The question is that, are you saying these are the only leakages in the public sector, right? What about assets which are not useful? We have to sell them. What about overlap of work people are, you know, and so on and so forth. So the first one says, uh, business human resource management is saying that they're going to treat workers as the laws and kings, but we don't see that one. For example, uh, these days, when you go for interview, people are trying to find out where you've, you, you've worked in a team or how you can demonstrate that you are really a team player. And people are saying that but if you overemphasize on team playing, team playing, are you not taking away people, individual ingenuity, individual identity, individual innovation? Yes. So because these things are going, business editors is saying, no, what employees promise to treat human beings as HRM and not personnel management is a mere rhetoric and therefore it's ethical problem. If you promise somebody on paper, on air, you don't do it, it's an ethical challenge. That is the first thing. assumption be between human resource management and then uh, reality on the ground. That's number one. The second thing is known as, look, uh, you can write this down, employees right to freedom from discrimination okay 
employee's right to freedom from discrimination. That is the word. What does he say? Listen to this. He says that no worker should be discriminated against at work. So anytime we see discrimination, it means we are behaving on ethical. That is the first thing you will have to know. Now, then you will say, Mr. Lecturer, can you explain instances of discrimination so that we can understand and know that indeed this is unethical practice? Yes. So, Luko, now, uh, okay, so I'll come back to where I began from. When we say workers are being discriminated against, it means they are discriminated against on two key principles, two of them, and I'm explaining them, so pay attention. One of them is that as a worker, you can be discriminated against the rate, or as a worker, you can also be discriminated against in the red. Now look, any time any of that is meted against you, it is consequential to discrimination. The first one says direct. What does direct discrimination mean? Direct discrimination means that, look, you have been discriminated against and that discrimination is already written on paper. That is what makes it direct. For example, if let's say there is a vacancy publication in the newspaper, and then they say, if you are above 45, they're not gonna employ you, listen to me. Anywhere you go and then you're not retired, but they said, if you are more than 45, they cannot employ you. We call that one direct discrimination. If the company cannot prove that if you are above 45, you cannot do that work, then even though no law on earth tells them to who to employ, who not to employ, business ethics will come in and say, man, you are being discriminatory. The reason being that this very job, somebody under 45, somebody above 45, both of them can do and you are depriving the person over 45, his or her right to end, end a living. So that is direct discrimination, okay? So simply discrimination written down. And when the employer cannot justify, why are you saying that when somebody is, I mean, we know that when people are over 60, sometimes they are not well. That one, it makes economic sense that you're likely to incur more money on medical expenses and all that. So it's okay to let them go home and rest. But if you say, if you're above 45, 40, we cannot do this for you, this, that. Business ethics will come and say, yes, there's no law that forces you, forces you to employ anybody. No law gives you any age in this world, however, if you cannot justify why somebody over 45 cannot do this work, you are being discriminatory. The second one is called indirect discrimination. Indirect discrimination means, look, this time around, the discrimination is not written down that if you are 45, you cannot do this work. Even though it is not written down, but in practice, you can see a trend. So for example, um, I go to a firm, uh, maybe in the last five, 10 years, no manager is a female. So something will tell me that in this company, 
they are not making any attempt to promote women. Even though they've not said it, but I can make an ethical case that I don't understand why. Because these days, even situation where there's no any woman, they can make affirmative action quickly and get a woman. So I can say that this firm is biased. It's biased towards women. Even though they never said it, but I have systematic evidence to believe, and that is equal to indirect discrimination. For example, if you take leave for one week, and when you went back to work, something important, perhaps they've, they've balloted for a key decision which affects you, or they've shared something important they didn't give you simply because you were not there. You can tell them that they have indirectly discriminated against you. Why? They waited when you were not there, even though they didn't tell you that oh, it's because you were not there. But something that affects you, something that you would have been involved, it happened when you're not there. And you can say this is discriminatory. So whenever um, there is absence of discrimination, and it means that the employers, the companies, we see them to be equal opportunity employers. That is the ideal situation to become an employer of equal opportunity. Anything short of that is criticized as being unethical. Now, so look, look at these things. Eh? So um, it means that don't discriminate against anybody unless otherwise you have a very justifiable reason. Now, come, let's look at something. So um, I'll come, I'll come back. Uh -huh. So disability. Today, a lot of disabled people are now working. Business ethics is saying the law is quiet, but we want to find out. The work that people are doing and they earn a living, are you saying that every disabled person cannot do? If you cannot prove, it means that you're discriminating on the basis of disability, right? That's number one. Two, I talk about age. If you are above 45, you can do something. What is the likelihood that 45-year-old person and 30 year can do this work? No reason this is um, discriminatory, which is what written. Like that, like that. Now, let's come back. There are some uh, examples here. Let's go to the case. What does it say? It says, suggest four examples of practice, practice, practices that will constitute indirect discrimination on the grounds of sex and color. So uh, there are four instances here, and they say, uh, give an answer why you think this will constitute indirect discrimination. And the first one says, when people advertise certain job vacancies in a primary, maybe primarily a male dominated environment where women will be less likely to say it. You can say this is discriminatory. Or for example, in Ghana, we know women don't like to read graphic. If you come to University of Ghana, it's worse. Hardly will you see a woman reading graphic. And they are saying, if you want to publish something that both men and women should enjoy, and you know women don't like reading graphic, so you don't say it in the radio, you don't say it on, on, in the, on the TV, and you only put it in the papers, somebody can say this one is equal to indirect discrimination, and the person can win. All right? Or when people are part-time workers, and because they are part-time, you're making their condition worse. If anybody asks why, you say, oh, but because they are part-time. Business ethics is saying that it's not the best. Or the age limit. Or maybe during interview, all right? Maybe women are there. And some maybe a panel member will ask, when are you planning to have a family? Now, business ethics is trying to say, if the job has nothing to do with 
The question is about banking work. You are interviewing me to become accountant. It has nothing to do with, and you ask me that question. I can charge you of indirect discrimination. So these are thousand and one things happening to a lot of workers and they are not aware. Okay, so that's all about number two. Now let's go to number three thing that employees. Uh, so this is number three, this is two. Number three, right to privacy. Now listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. What this means is that the fact that a company employs you doesn't mean every information of yours is theirs. No, it's not true. The fact that a company employs you does not mean that every information you have yeah, so look at this. He said, let us begin by uh, by this sub team, uh, the overview of following questions. So answer each of the following questions as true or false. So look, somebody went to look for a job and they gave the person some question to fill. And this is like this. The first one said, I wish I were, I were not bothered by the thought of sex. All right, so take true or false. Second, I am very strongly attracted by members of my own sex. It's talking about whether you're gay or not. Yeah. Yes, sir. In in a, in a, okay, a moment, please. Okay, now, so what I'm saying, what makes these questions on ethical is that business ethics will ask the question, but these questions that you are asking me, in what way do they relate to what I am coming to do? That is what I want to draw your attention on. What way? Okay, that's it. Um, so, and then business ethics is trying to say, Everybody has right to privacy. Every worker has right to privacy. And look, uh, privacy means that social privacy uh, and then information privacy and psychological 
What do we mean by physical privacy? Physical privacy means that where you work, even if it is an open office, you have to have a desk to yourself. Even if you, are, you run shift, when you show up at work, there ought to be a place to work that people should not describe you. Okay, so even in, uh, in shift you know, companies and other things, uh, depending, everybody has a locker as a when they show up. So you have to have where you sit and work. You are allowed to do that. If the firm is not making that available, this is not unethical. The second one says that as a human being, you have right to associate with anybody you want, especially during break time. So I can go out to eat and come. I can talk to anybody provided it's not working hours. So where there are barriers, you cannot be free to see this, to see that psychologically within the workplace, they are infringing on your ethical right to associate and relate. That is number two. Number three, information privacy is what I said. So listen to me, business editors is trying to say, nobody should fail any forms on it from today, from A to Z. If there are certain questions that you don't understand, it doesn't relate to what they, they are trying to ask you to do. Tell them, why do you want me to answer such a question? That is why if you are filling a lot of forms abroad, there are many places they will say optional, 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 because they are well aware that those are your private issues. So you will have to decide whether I'm going to re re uh, release that to you or not. The fourth one is psychological privacy. What they say is that nobody can be happy every day, 24-7, 365 on quarter days. So even though today companies emphasize on customer service, customer service, customer service, but they say that once upon a time, if people become emotional, it should be acceptable. Yeah, if, if it's a stream, the best they can do is apologize, that's all. And then if it becomes something continuous, then we say this is not acceptable. Otherwise, when people once upon a time express emotion, we shouldn't use against them because people should be free sometimes express their privacy. And then number four, look, number four is about health and drug testing. This one also says that eh, if I'm working and I'm strong, I've never given you any cause to, to believe that the work I'm doing, I'm not able to do. You can ask me to go and do HIV tests, uh, whether I am on drugs. No, you can't ask me to do that unless I have given you reason, okay? I've given you reason. So you can't just simply say, I'm coming to drive for you. I'm coming to be a clerk and therefore you go and do HIV. No, there are a few tests. This is very important. So you cannot do every test on X. So please question the employees, so that the employers we will want you to do that. Number six is called electronic data. This one also say that companies cannot get your private data, all right, when you are at work every, all the time. So for example, break time, there's, there are things you can do on your own, nobody should. So where you work and there are cameras, business entries, you see camera cannot be on workers 24 hours. Break time, you can go anywhere. They, they, they never ought to be, there mustn't be a camera there. The washroom, there mustn't be a camera there and all that, where there are cameras everywhere, question them that this is ethically unacceptable and take them to the human rights court, okay? You have, the, you have right to send your email through Yahoo and Google. Don't use the company one for the IT people to know where you're sending. And then we also have things like, uh, due process what does that mean they say everything that happens at the company and you are not informed in advance they don't give you time to hear think about it it means 
they are forcing it on you. And we call that one do this do, or question. And on this is ethically unacceptable. Then it's another one employee participation. What they are trying to say is that um, you or, or your reps should be in meetings that concerns you in the company. You should not be as communicated at all, either you or the association. A rep must be. And then uh, the last but not the least, okay, is about good working condition. You are entitled to work at a condition that your health will not be injured. Will not be injured. And then I think we even have excessive working hours. So um, you mustn't do long hours. So for example, I'm told that in the banks, they don't pay over time, but normally people don't go home early. But if you are the type, every time you close and go home, somebody is going to victimize you. Those things are not acceptable. And then business ethics also talk about flexible working hours. But that one, these days, because of the COVID-19, people are now used to. Okay, so this is basically about a number of things that, because we are not sure, um, companies are just taking us for granted. So two things are happening here. You are going to be managers, and then you need to watch distance. And then as you're going out, you should also watch if somebody is doing things against you. But you don't become angry though, but you take your time and then you respond or you ask questions about why are they trying to let you do certain things. Okay. So that is really all, ladies and gentlemen, for this evening about employees, you and I, and ethical issues as and our organizations. That's all. If anybody has any question, I've sent you all the slides. Uh, who is the class rep among us? Somebody send me. Um,